the Jazz started the season with a record of 7 and 16. They are now 21 and 20. They have gone 14 and 4. Will Hardy has been tinkering the lineups throughout the year and I think he's found some pairings and combinations that have really changed stuff with the team. And and the guy I want to land on right away is uh, the Italian legend, Simone Fontecchio, who the Jazz, Cody, the Jazz are eight and one in this lineup they're running now with Simone Fontecchio in the starting lineup. This is a change in the last month. He shoots well, high release, great movement off the ball, and then knows when to attack and close out and make the good extra pass. That's all he does. And then you put that... And I'm so glad you said the 2014 Spurs because I get the vibes as well where you don't have a player really playing over 30 minutes per game. You have so many different contributors in different places. Like they try to play two playmaking guards. So Sexton will play with Clarkson and then Clarkston will play with George. They just try to always have two of those guys out there. Moving Walker Kessler to the bench was a huge thing and finding okay Walker Kessler on the bench and let me pair him with Kelly Olynyk, who's a stretch big and he's a stretch big who can kind of make some plays in the middle of the court and supplement the playmaking and so what you end up with is this read and react flow offense that has these hints of a beautiful game element because what coach Will Hardy wants is he wants the players out there making decisions, understanding how to read defenses, moving and flowing from one set into the next. And so if you haven't seen this team, um, it's sort of like not suitable for work, basketball level of adult entertainment. Like they'll start with like a staggered screen away and then they're twirl it. The guy who sets the screen turns around and then he comes over and gets a little pitch and then he goes in the corner. Meanwhile, three other guys are screening on the other side of the court. They're sprinting in different directions. Oopsie doopsie, Lowry marketing and got open you know he's like one of the best shooters in the league so that's a three Lowry's kind of the centerpiece of it all and the star and the big name but he because of the way he plays he's not on ball a lot stuff isn't built around him they're augmenting defensive lineups around him I wouldn't say he's a poor defender because he's so big uh, he uses his size really well but it's like why why start Fontecchio why start Chris Dunn Those guys are really good defensively. It's like all of a sudden everything is falling into place and you get this team that is way more than the sum of their parts. And, okay, something you said about, like, they're blending in with a lot of these actions. You have a lot of these guys coming off, like, double staggers, but then, like, an action will happen, but then two guys over here kind of bunched up and you're like, oh, wait a second, are one of these guys going to screen for that person? And then just, like, because they seem to be communicating, like, telepathically, like, all of a sudden, one of them, like, dives to the rim, one of them flares out, and you're just like, oh, my God, the defense is completely thrown away. Uh, Kelly Olynyk throws a lob to John Collins or throws a lob to whomever, or John Collins throws a lob to Kessler. There's just lobs all over the place because people are freaking out about, like, the perimeter actions that they're doing. And a lot of it works, like you said, because Laurie Markkinen is kind of used as, like, a Reggie Miller offensive piece in the sense that like they're not just giving him the ball and they're like hey go create some stuff for us because he's not really much of a creator like the weakness in his offensive game is is the passing chops but when you set him up in a position where he comes off a pin down he catches and he fires like it's impossible to contest him because he's a seven footer with a high release but oh you're getting up close to him this guy just burns by you with the streaking athleticism because he just wants to dunk on everyone like this guy just dives to the basket with reckless abandon and that's a lot to try and stay in front of and then when you have defenses collapsing he's a good enough passer that he can make a simple uh kick out and then everyone else just kind of knows where to be around that so like he's sort of the juice that makes the offense flow but it's not in the sense that like they're giving him the ball and letting him cook but his ability to just like be decisive in his shots and his drives and things like that is the thing that really makes the offense as potent as it is Well, they've really weaponized him away from the ball, to your point. And what I love about the Jazz offense is that the sequences always have options that build on each other. So the entire wide pin down where they set a screen in the corner for Lowry and he curls off, that creates problems for the defense. Do you send two players to that? If you don't, do do you, you post him up because of the switch? Like... How do you handle that when he comes off that curl or just comes off that screen for a catch and shoot? Then the next time 
Utah can just use him as the screener. So the two guys are over in the corner. He turns around and sets the screen. And now you have a dynamic, one of those dynamic offensive players that I talked about, Jordan Clarkson or someone like that curling. And if the defense has to respond to that, then Markkinen just pops out for a little catch and shoot three. So the actions are always building on each other. They have another one that I love where they'll have staggered screens away from the ball and everyone in the NBA runs this and the guy curls off and you can attack from there and get good offense. But they'll do stuff like against the Mavs, Cody, they came down, they set up the staggered screen action away from the ball and then it turns out it's actually not a staggered screen. Fontecchio turns and he's going to set two screens for the ball handler instead. So they're not looking for the off-ball action. Now they turn it into an on-ball action. And then Fontecchio, is it is it a Spain pick and roll? Is it what's is it a slip and a pop? No. Fontecchio slides like in between the defender and the other screener, flares out to the three-point line, just catch and shoot, drops it on someone's head because that's his skill set. So all of the X's and O's that they have have these series that can develop in, in this sort of beautiful way. And what they want is continuity. So if the first part of the action breaks down, where are you going? Where are you flowing to next? If I set a screen here the, and the action isn't an easy shot, I go somewhere else and I set another screen. It's just not super easy to defend, especially relative to what we would think about the offensive talent they have is out on the court. And what really does help the off-ball stuff happens is the way that they've like consolidated a lot of the on-ball juice, too. Like you said, I think it's especially Colin Sexton and it's Jordan Clarkson, who, if you look at drives per 36 in the thinkingbasketball.net database, both of these guys are near the top of the league. Like, I think I think Clarkson, Clarkson, Clarkson. <laughs> yes, Clarkson. Uh <laughs> Kojo or Clarkston is very, yes, it's a very potent point guard. (laughs) So Clarkson, I think, is in the top 10 in drives for 36. And, you know, Colin Sexton is right around top 15. So these are two guys that, like, when all this stuff is happening, they can still break down their guy. And I know that Clarkson's, like, relative true shooting percentage is pretty underwater. Like, he's a woefully inefficient uh, type of scorer. But he kind of brings this, like, irrational confidence off the bench. Like, he might be at the top of the, like, yes, yes, no kind of guys in the NBA. Like, I think the clearest, like, yes, yes, no play. I think he, like, he like drives in. Uh, somebody tries to, I think it's Olenek, tries to make a pass to him while he's cutting. He kind of bobbles the ball, and he, like, jumps up. because He's like, all right, I guess I'm just going to shoot. And then last minute, he's like, oh, wait, there's Walker Kessler. I'm just going to throw him a lob. And just, like, throws it right over and hits him. And so, like, you kind of have these two guys that are, like, really adept at getting by pretty much anyone in the NBA and at least getting paint touches. And when you have like singular talents that have the ability to do that, despite the fact that like Clarkson's uh, efficiency isn't great. um, I think that really stirs the drink a lot more and opens the door for a lot of this other off ball kind of stuff, because you still have to be afraid of the guy that has the ball, as opposed to like, you know, like a classic delay action. you got a big guy up top that's passing the ball. You're not always afraid of that guy beating you off the dribble. But when you have a little speedster off the dribble, you really have to be able to watch like backline defense and rotating around to try and stop somebody like that. So I like the role that Hardy's kind of like carved out for both Clarkson and Sexton. Yeah, I mean, offensively, I just think their their role is perfect for this team. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.